All right, we should be live. So uh, some of you might have known that I was uh, streaming live to the Show It um, uh, YouTube channel, and uh, we were doing this presentation on how to run a highly effective lead generation campaign. Uh, and of course, um, just as we were getting going, you know, we were probably close to being halfway through the presentation, and uh, just the internet went out. Um, and so I guess it is the season, right, for, uh, for inconveniences, I guess. Um, so show it's uh, so we've set up just streaming live to the uh, the Facebook group here. Um, if you were uh, if you had joined us for the live, I'm going to be starting over here. So I apologize if you already sat through some of this uh, and we're going through it again. Um, but that way we at least get a recording that we can put out later uh, as a replay. So I apologize for that. Um, and uh, you know. Hopefully, uh, we can get through this uh, this recording here um, without too much of an issue. Um, if you are here live with us, I'd love for you to comment. Just let me know that you're here. You know, it's always sort of weird speaking to nobody, all right? So um, if you have questions as we get through this, if there's something wrong with the audio, if there's something wrong with the video, let me know. Uh, and of course, let me know if you have any questions. But really excited about this topic um, in particular. Uh, because I, I just, uh, from multiple different experiences now, understand how important lead generation is and consistent lead generation is. So as people are as people uh, uh, log in here, um, I want to start with a question. And that question uh, simply is, where will your next client come from? All right? Where will your next client come from? And that's the big question that we have to answer, right? Do you know where your next uh, client is going to come from? Or are you just kind of generally, vaguely aware of the places that your clients have come from to date? So as I sort of outline this problem here, part of the issue is that we build these beautiful websites. You know, show it lets us really level up our online presence. So we build these beautiful websites, we invest in things like brand design, and then a lot of us typically take this passive approach to marketing. We kind of hope, okay, well, I built this online presence, you know, I, hopefully people will just stumble upon us. But uh, many of us have found out that's not the case, right? People just, uh, you know, sometimes people stumble upon us, but typically if that's our approach, we're unhappy with the amount of people that just happen to stumble upon us, right? So that problem is compounded by, of the people who stumble upon us, fewer than those people, a subset of those people actually book uh, book us or purchase from us, right? So uh, typically, the vast majority of people who uh, encounter us for the very first time will not book us, inquire, purchase from us in that same session. And that makes sense, right? We have to build a certain amount of trust with people. And so again, what approach are we going to take? Are we going to take a more of a, a passive approach and just hope that, okay, well, they'll go through my website and they'll kind of like that. And then, then hopefully they jump over to my social media and meet me there. And I've built up enough trust for them to purchase or reach out to me. All right. Or is there a better way? Is there a way where we can be a little bit more active in capturing and generating leads on our website, but through other means? And so my hope for you after this training is that you start to feel like you have a strategy for getting in front of more people, but not only a strategy for getting in front of more people, a strategy for moving sort of a website visitor who just has a general awareness of you to a lead that you can follow up with. All right. So if you are not super familiar with who I am, uh, I am one half of the Davy and Krista team. Um, Davy and Krista is a uh, branding and website design agency. Um, we've been grateful to be part of the, the Show It community for some time now. Um, we are Show It Design Partners. Um, a few years ago at United, we were uh, uh, voted the Show It Designers of the Year. And then this past year, one of our templates was, was voted the Show It Premium Template of the Year. So super grateful for, to be a part of this community. Of course, all of that, all of those, uh, those cool little um, things I just mentioned, my wife deserves all the credit for, the, for those. Uh, she is the designer. Uh, I am just a lowly marketer. All right. Um, but as a marketer, I helped co-found a, a advertising agency called Till Agency. Uh, I co-founded that along with two friends of mine, um, Jesse Marchecho and Ryan Akins. And over at Till Agency, we run Facebook ads for a lot of pretty awesome 
uh, businesses. Show it being uh, one of those businesses. We actually run Facebook ads for some some other show designers as well. Uh, Flowdesk, CloudSpot, a, a number of other industries that you would probably recognize as a creative. And so one of the cool things about being able to do that is now I, I, I'm not only, as I share this, this, uh, this content, I'm not only tapping into experience that I've used in building my own businesses, but also experience from, you know, things we've learned from running ad campaigns for a lot of other businesses in the creative uh, industry in particular. And so particularly passionate about today's uh, topic and leads me to this question. What do you think is the one type of ad campaign that we're always encouraging our clients to run? What do you think the one type of campaign is that we're always encouraging our, our clients to run? So I'll let you jump in. Um, I'll let you kind of jump in the comments and, and let me know. You can probably guess because, you know, I've already, I've already shared with you the title of the presentation. Um, I'm going to go through some of the comments uh, while I do this. Sean, my next client, my next client would likely come from Davey when we get together at a conference. I am a great ambassador. All right. So if you get me to, if you see me at a conference and we're friends and I am aware of your company, just get me a few drinks and I will start talking to everybody about your product. Sean Gordon from Kiss knows this firsthand. So yeah, that's right. That's right. Those are a big part of it. Anyways, the one type of campaign that we always encourage people to run is, of course, lead generation. We want to get people new subscribers. We want to get the businesses that we work with new subscribers. We want people to purchase their products or uh, uh, book their services. But what we also want is to generate leads because we know at the end of the day, when we're doing lead generation, all right, we are taking people who are just generally aware of a product or service we're taking website visitors and we're giving people a we're giving those businesses a way to follow up with those people so how somebody moves from website traffic to lead is by giving that business contact information typically that's an email address all right but it could be a phone number it could be any sort of way to follow up um, with somebody so by doing lead generation we're doing a few different things First, we are creating more sustainable results, all right, because we always are getting people into the pipeline. So as you're working with people, you know that in the background, you are also nurturing people. And that's the other thing I like about lead generation is instead of passively hoping that people come across you and get to know you a little bit, at the same time, you are intentionally nurturing them through hopefully different campaigns that you put together through things like email. Uh, something else that it does is that it helps you build awareness and audiences. And now when, when I talk about audiences, I have Facebook in mind. So for those of you who are familiar with Facebook audiences, when you run ads, we're going to get to that in a, in a little bit, but it helps you build awareness too. So for instance, if you're running some sort of giveaway, right, and you make it a viral giveaway so that when somebody uh, enters that giveaway, they get more entries by sharing that giveaway, you're likely to get in front of more audiences, but it doesn't have to be a giveaway. It could be you know, any sort of content that's just solid, people are more likely to share good content, right? They're more likely to share things that have an impact on their life with others, all right? So lead generation, I think, is crucial to creating sustainable results in your business, all right? Sorry, my slides are on another screen. It's not super convenient in, uh, in you know, operating all this. So if I'm looking all around... But this is exactly what we're going to cover. What makes a lead magnet effective? We're going to talk about a framework for a higher converting landing page. Uh, and, you know, uh, Krista should uh, post the link. Of course, I didn't come prepared with the link. Uh, Krista will post a link in the comments, but we're actually going to give everybody a template that they can install in their existing Show It website. So it's one of our add-on templates. That's a landing page template. So you get that completely free. Crystal will post the link to that um, so that you can download that and, and add that to your existing Show It website. So hopefully, you know, we've done, you know, at least a quarter of the work for you. Uh, and so now you'll just have the, the work of um, uh, creating a, a lead magnet. Anyways, we're also going to talk about one of my favorite hacks for ampli amplifying your lead generation results. So... Let's dive in. Number one, this is kind of our plan for today. We're going to focus more on the first half of this plan than the second half of this plan, but we're going to be talking about, let's, let's dive into creating uh, a lead magnet. 
So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with a, what a lead magnet is, it's something of value that you can offer to people in exchange for somebody's contact information. Typically, that's an email. If you can get a phone number, that's great because if someone's willing to give you a phone number, it means that they're pretty serious about what it is that you have to offer, right? With that said, people are more likely to be to give up their, their email address. So that's why you typically see lead gen done making email the required field and not uh, and not phone numbers. Hold on, let me just get down to my notes here. But we typically think about lead magnets as downloadables, but lead magnets can be all sorts of different things. Really, it's anything that you're willing to give away, all right, any sort of content that you're willing to give away for free in exchange for somebody's email address. So it can be checklists, video training, webinars, I list all of those in the right-hand column here. Now, typically, uh, people know what a lead magnet is, right? So you're probably not saying, hey, Davey, what's a lead magnet? What you're probably asking yourself is, what should you offer? What is it that I should create? That's really where people typically run into uh, issues is trying to figure out what they can create as a lead magnet. Now, I'm going to go through a couple questions that you should start thinking through as you think through whether you know this is your first lead magnet or your next lead magnet, but to help you start developing one. First, what can you give people for free that gives them a glimpse of the magic that you offer? All right. So, for instance, we subscribe to something called Cook Smarts, and it's just um, meal planning, you know, uh, and they give you the recipes and they give you a grocery list. And what's awesome about that is at the end of the day, you don't have to think about what you're going to make for dinner. You just, you know, get out the recipe card and you start making it. Same thing with the grocery list. You're not trying to figure out, you're not trying to do the meal planning. It takes that mental load out of it so that you can just go to the grocery store. You have your grocery list already. Now, they have a 30 day free trial. So we're able to experience that before committing to it with our dollars. All right. So can you do something like that in your business? Uh, Michaela and Dave Harris, uh, something that they told me they once did, which I thought was just uh, an incredible idea was when people came into their studio to, as it, for a consult for, you know, booking them as wedding photographers, they'd actually do a couple of uh, portraits of them right there in their studio. All right. Before anybody had to make a commitment, and it was a great way to show off how how uh, good they are um, at, at their jobs. Before you know, in, in order to build trust with people to get them to book, right? So those are great ways that you can give people a little bit of a uh, a glimpse of the magic you offer um, before they have to get out their wallet. What sort of questions do you repeatedly answer? Everybody gets the same questions over and over and over again. So during consult calls, during discovery calls, what sort of questions are asked over and over and over again? Can you package those in, in something that people can download? Then they have those questions answered and, and they're in the right mindset when they actually show up to the meeting with you, they're one step closer to booking. If you have a new product or a new service, something where you're first to market, it might be a matter of educating people on the problem itself so that they know it's a problem that's worth solving. So how can you educate people on the problem? And then lastly, uh, and this is more of a practical uh, concern, is how do you most effectively communicate information? How do you most effect effectively communicate information? If you don't like writing, then maybe creating an ebook isn't for you. If you don't think you're dynamic on video, then maybe getting on video and doing a video training isn't necessarily for you. But fortunately, there's all sorts of different options. All right. So there's everything from ebooks. You know, what we just did, right, is we just were giving away a, a free template, all right, a, as a landing page template. Um, doing a, a video training, putting together an audio training if you'd rather if you'd rather go, you know, do sort of a podcast style. But the the ideas are endless. And what I'm going to go through is a couple examples of uh, lead magnets that people have put together and talk about some of the things that I like uh, about each of them. So hopefully you'll get some inspiration from some of these examples here. The first one I want to go through here Lauren Jackson, she's a wedding photographer in Northeast Ohio, and she put together this lead magnet around venues, all right? So a list of Northeast Ohio wedding venues. Now, when people are looking for a wedding photographer, right, typically they either haven't booked a, uh, I'm sorry, when people are uh, looking for a wedding venue, typically they haven't booked a wedding photographer yet, or they're in the process of doing both the, those things together. So this is a great way for Lauren to get in front of people as they're doing you know, initial research, and then hopefully be top of mind when they move on to booking a photographer. Something else that's really cool about this lead magnet in particular is it, gets, it gives Lauren an opportunity to show off her work at each of these venues. So uh, many of us have probably been asked, hey, have you ever shot at the venue 
that I'm getting married at? Well, this answers that question, all right? And so again, moving people one step closer to hopefully booking by the time you've met with them. Another example, Amy and Jordan, we probably all recognize this website. Amy and Jordan, everything they do is jam-packed full of information. Um, one of the things that I really like uh, about uh, really all of their you know sales and marketing copy is it's very benefit oriented all right so they're they're tapping into um you know how their training is going to benefit our life but this is a free video training that you can go sign up for and all it requires is your email address another uh, example so Anne marie blake blake uh, she's a photographer i think in the philadelphia area krista can correct me if i'm wrong um, but this is a good portrait photographer uh, example. So want to take better photos of your family with your phone? This is great because one, by giving away this kind of content, it's not like you're negating a need for uh, a professional photographer for a family session, but you're offering a ton of value to parents, especially who want to be able to take good pictures of their kids or their families with their phone. So great way to show your competent, great way to build trust. And then, excuse me, and then hopefully be top of mind when somebody's ready to book um, uh, their next family session. Oh, one more thing about this. For those of you who are like, well, I don't want to have to design uh, a lead magnet, right? I don't want to have to, you know, go into Canva or Photoshop or do that. Well, guess what? This is an email course. So instead of having to design all these downloads, she just simply drips out tips via email each week. So um, another great option for those of you who don't want to mess with designing anything. Morgan Williams, she is a maternity and newborn photographer, I believe. But this, uh, this uh, again, something that p new parents or expecting parents, rather, would be interested in. Five registry items you don't know you need. Um, and, I, and I haven't actually downloaded this one, um, but my, my guess is that she's talking about things where that could easily lead into her discussing what she does, all right? But it's something she's meeting people in a place where they're probably starting to think about hiring a maternity uh, photographer or hiring a photographer photographer for a newborn session. So these next two that I want to talk about, I, I, I'm bringing up specifically because I want to talk about how lead magnets aren't just great for getting in front of new people. Okay. So lead magnets can do more than just get you in front of new people. Uh, this is Jess Jordana's site. This is a, a um, a website that we just launched. Um, she has two lead magnets on her website. She might have more, but uh, these are the two I want to call out. On the left-hand side, you see um, you can download her free mini promptlet. And a promptlet is simply a, basically it's a template full of prompts that will help you write copy on your website. So she gives away the contact page one and she sells, uh, I think, a homepage, about page, and services page ones. So by downloading this, somebody going through this, hopefully they experience how easy this makes writing copy on your website. Again, moving you one, one step closer to purchasing uh, this product. This is a great lead magnet for people who had never heard of Jess before because it requires very little commitment, right? When somebody downloads this, it just requires their email address. Now, on the other hand, Jess has a free video training as well. The video training uh, requires a little bit more commitment. So if you sign up for a video training, you know you're going to sit there for 45 minutes, you're going to sit there for 60 minutes, you're going to sit there for 90 minutes. So that video training might still work among uh, a colder audience, but probably going to be better for people who have heard of her before. All right. Now, this is still valuable, right? Because our goal is to move people down the funnel. All right, so it's not only to get as many people as possible into the top of the funnel here, but then once they're in, to move them down the stages of the funnel to hopefully purchase. And Little Z Sleep does something similar. All right, so Little Z, um, uh, Becca from Little Z, she does sleep training for parents. Well, really, uh, so parents can sleep training their kids, but you get what I'm saying. 
Point being is the lead magnet is on the right-hand side here. What should my child's schedule be? That's a question when Jack was born is like, hey, when should he be sleeping? When should he be awake? Well, you can go through this quiz on our website. It's going to generate an age-appropriate schedule for you. Now, when you you know implement that schedule or go to implement that schedule, now you're thinking, okay, well, how do I get my kid to actually sleep during these times? And you might start considering her programs. And she has another quiz that helps you pick the right program for you. So again, it's all about moving people down the funnel or bringing them up the value ladder, all right? So hopefully you've noticed a couple different things about each of these lead magnets. Number one, it qualifies people so you know they're interested in what you're offering. I could probably get a lot of you to sign up for our email list by offering you free iPads, right? Everybody wants an iPad. However, just because you're interested in an iPad doesn't necessarily mean you're also interested in website design or brand design right? So you want to make sure whatever you're offering qualifies people. Beyond that, you want to educate people. Again, by educating people, you're building trust, you're showing you're competent, you are moving people through the funnel. If you can offer a quick win, really, not if you can, you should hopefully offer a quick win to people. Offering a quick win when people feel like they really got something out of it, even if it's just one thing, it makes them more naturally want to uh, take the next step, whatever that is. So try to offer people a quick win. And yes, I also want a free iPad, Vanessa. But anyways, get people to move on, get people to take the next action. All right. Now cross your fingers because I think this is where the internet went out. The last time we were doing this presentation, I'm going to take a quick drink of water and then we'll move on. So let's see. Everybody's still here. This is the big concern that I typically get uh, after I after I'm talking with somebody about creating lead magnets, and, and it's and it's this: Am I giving away too much? Like, are they going to buy? Like, I just gave them some of my best material. Are they gonna, really going to buy from me? I enthusiastically believe that if at the after you're done writing a blog post, after you're done writing a lead, uh, creating a lead magnet, after you're done creating any sort of content, if you're not asking yourself whether you've given away too much. It's not valuable enough. You haven't, you haven't, uh, uh, you haven't shared enough. All right. I firmly believe that the more of your best content you, you share, the more willing people are going to be to actually work, uh, work with you. All right. So, even if it comes to like course, you know, even if like a lot of, even if you have an online course and a lot of the content in your online course can be found on your blog, the online course is still valuable because it, it, it puts everything in one place. So people don't have to go and search for it. And then people are just more enthusiastic. They're happier to buy from you, right? When you know, when they know you've been giving away a ton of value for free. So don't be scared about giving away too much. All right. I would definitely err on the side of giving away too much than giving away too little. All right. See, now everybody wants iPads. I should have never brought it up. Now, now our, our landing page template that we're giving away doesn't look, doesn't look as good. All right. So moving on to building a landing page. Again, if you have any questions about the stuff that the, anything that I'm presenting on, feel free to ask. I, I can see the comments. They're a little bit delayed, um, but I'm happy to answer those questions. I'm also happy to answer questions at the end as well. So building a landing page, and like I said, we're giving you a landing page template, so a lot of this work is already done, but I want to go through some of the most important elements of building a landing page. Um, of course, you don't need much to do this. You just need show it, and then you need a, an email platform. We recommend Flowdesk or ConvertKit. We think that both of these are simple enough platforms that anybody, uh, even the beginner, could pick up. But they provide enough advanced features that once you grow into this a little bit, you won't, you won't be, you won't feel like you're wanting features. All right. So we think that these are two solid uh, email platforms. So the purpose of the landing page is to get people to opt in. And you might say, of course, Davey, that's sort of obvious. But what that means is that you want to strip away everything else that might be a distraction. Your landing page is not a place to put your, your three most read uh, blog posts. All right. It's not a place to put your, you know, all the links to your social media uh, accounts. You want to make sure that you're hyper focused on getting people to take the next step. All right. And I think that this is probably the best piece of marketing advice that I could ever give you. Be hyper-focused on getting people to take the next 
step. All right. And, and, you know, if there's whatever that next step is, remove all of the other distractions. And this is something that you can apply to your websites. It's something you can apply to your sales pages. It's something you can apply really to all your marketing efforts. What is the next step for people to take on your landing page? That is typically to opt in. And by typically, I mean, it's always to opt in. You want to focus on benefits, not features. Sell the whole, not the drill. I, I brought up uh, Amy and Jordan uh, earlier, and one of the things that I think they do really, really well um, is just they, they focus on whatever the benefit is uh, going to be to your life after you you know consume whatever content it is that they're sharing. All right. So sell the whole, not the drill. When I go to Home Depot and I and I buy a tool, I don't really care about the specs of the motor, or the engine, or whatever. Right. I care that it can that it can serve a certain function. Okay. So make sure that you're benefit focused, not feature focused. Um, if on your website you want to answer questions like how many images people get, that's a feature, right? And do people really care that they get 967 images? Probably not. What they care about is the quality of image they get, that they're going to be able to cherish those images with, with their kids and their grandkids and their grandkids after that, all right? So sell the whole, not the drill. Uh, an attention grabbing headline. Headlines are important. Headlines sell. All right. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, a little bit further on in this presentation. But you can you can take a uh, a lead magnet that's not performing well, change the um, change the headline, and then all of a sudden it's performing well. So headlines have power. What are you promising? Again, be benefit oriented. So here are a couple examples. Um, on the left hand side, some things that I would, I would consider more feature oriented. On the right hand side, maybe a little bit more benefit oriented. Um, I put together these two things a little bit uh, quickly. So I wouldn't say these are the best examples in the world, but uh, hopefully it gets my point across. So instead of five ways to make more money and talking about val customer value optimization, you say, double your revenue without booking more clients. Instead of how to take better photos, it's three tips for taking photos your clients rave about, right? Because that's what we want. We, we want we want to be recognized by our clients. We want our clients to love their photos. Easy ed editing hacks. That's great, but do you do, do do I have time in my day to dig into easy editing hacks? Why why should I dive into this easy editing hack? I'm more likely though to download something that says this editing hack will save you hours. Just kidding. I never do any editing. Uh, we don't shoot anymore. We haven't shot for years, but even then, Krista wouldn't let me edit photos. So, um, yeah. But anyways, hopefully you get the idea. Focus on the benefits, not the features. Three to five benefit-driven bullet points. What can people expect to find after opting in? All right. Um, again, uh, you know, if you put together a video training, People don't care that it's a 93 minute and 15 second video training. Or is that 93 minutes and 15 seconds going to be worth it? That's what they want to know. Uh, a relevant image. This is especially true for those of us who do very visually oriented things like photography or design or um, even like Facebook ads, something like that. A strong call to action. All right, I'm just catching up on the comments here. I was too slow for what? What are you saying, Krista? <laughs> it, to my Krista is the boss. Yeah, all right, enough of you all. Um, anyway, strong call to action. You want to make sure that um, when people land on the page, they know what the next action leads to, right? So if you're if you are uh, doing a video training, right? Uh, grab your seat, sign up, uh, save your seats, you know, stuff like that. That makes sense. Uh, download now. Um, something else that I typically see. Um, like light gray buttons on white backgrounds. You want to make sure that your button has a little bit of contrast here. This is something that honestly, Chris and I go back and forth about a lot is um, kind of function over aesthetic. You know, you want to make sure that um, like having a beautiful design is great, but you also want to make sure things are functional and having a strong call to action goes a long way. Social proof that backs up your claim. Uh, you don't have to go crazy here. This isn't a sales page necessarily, but if you can bring in a testimonial that backs up um, whatever claim it is that you're making, that will go a long way. Um, this is, I think, an image from uh, the Veil preset um, website, and you can see a bunch of before and afters, and, and, and that goes a long way for people because they want to know what, whether it's going to work for them, right? And I think for Veil, you can actually send them an image to, to edit for you um, for free, right? And so that's a great way of, uh, that's a great method of lead generation right there. 
So in summary here, and this is actually uh, a screenshot of the landing page um, that we're giving you all, uh, headline, three to five benefit dri driven bullet points, clear call to action, a testimonial, um, and then you know an optional, we include like an optional about section. Um, and the reason we include that is because if someone's never heard of you before, they kind of want to get a sense of, okay, what is this business or organization or person about? Okay, so we think it's a nice touch, but you'll notice that in the top here, there's no room for navigations, there's no room for any of that. So uh, we do try to make it as um, focused as possible on actually uh, converting. I feel like I'm trying to catch up here on the comments. I see Krista. I see, I see Krista talking. I know she's not asking questions. So, anyways, if you have questions, let me know. We're moving on to sort of the next step here. So someone opts in, what's next after that? You might be thinking, oh, I'm gonna talk about the email campaign. I'm gonna talk about Facebook ads. Not yet. This is one of the most overlooked opportunities, all right? It's not, it's not necessarily like a, a new strategy here, but taking advantage of the thank you page, all right? Taking advantage of the thank you page. And there's a lot of reasons that you should take advantage of the thank you page. First, it's an opportunity to get in front of, it's an opportunity to put an offer in front of 100% of the people who opt in to your um, lead magnet. Here's the deal with email. Email is a great platform, all right? It's, I think, better than social media, uh, the whole algorithm thing, but email also has an algorithm. You might notice that occasionally emails land in spam. You might notice that occasionally emails land in your promotions folder. And it's the reason, the reason being is email platforms, or I'm sorry, email service providers also have their own algorithm. So they're, they're scanning the email, understanding what that email is about, and making a judgment call on whether it's spam, whether it belongs in your promotions folder, whether it belongs in your primary inbox, right? So... It's not guaranteed that if somebody signs up for your email list, they're going to actually get your emails. I say on average about, you know, 30 to 50 percent probably uh, open your uh, open emails. All right, and then you know less than 10 percent probably clicking on any links. So the reason that we love the uh, thank you page is because it's an opportunity to put a, an offer in front of people. And it, it's generally not going to, going to convert at a really high rate, you know? So it's not like eight out of 10 people who land on your thank you page are they going to purchase whatever's on it. But it does make people aware of what you do, all right? So it makes people aware, maybe previously they never heard of you, it does make people aware of what you do and what you offer. So it might just sit in the back of their mind until maybe they need to solve that problem. We also think it's just better to send people somewhere. Even if you're not going to put an offer in front of them, it's better to send people somewhere um, to get people to follow you around a little bit. So they go to that thank you page. That thank you page can have access to your navigation. It can have access to maybe your three best blog posts. Uh, give them a little bit of content they can consume right there. And then uh, it's also easier to track things when you're using a thank you page, which is going to be really important when it comes to something like Facebook ads, All right, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. Before we do that, we should talk about tracking though. All right. So in show it, Google Analytics is really easy. Oh, I don't think, dang it. I forgot. I had exported this as a PDF. So this, this um, video actually doesn't play in a PDF. So fail on my part. This goes back to those technical difficulties that we were just having uh, inside of Keynote. Um, it's really easy to add a Google Analytics code to show it. Um, Krista, maybe you can post in the comments exactly how to do that. You're going to go up to site and then uh, there's like two or three buttons you push. And then there's like a little text area for you to paste your Google analytics, um, tracking ID. And then all you do is paste it in there and then you're solid. You're good to go. Now to actually track downloads and stuff like that, you'll have to do that on the Google an analytics side. Um, Chris Mistrick, who was actually here kind of co-hosting this with me before we had all the technical difficulties. He did a great Facebook Live, uh, or maybe it was a YouTube Live, but it was to, for the Show It community. He's a designer at Show It um, on Google Analytics last week. So you can, I'm sure, check that out on Show It's uh, YouTube page. All right. I hear, yes, Chris. All right. Awesome. Uh, and Chris, you should, you should check out his... Um, 
uh, YouTube live as well. Um, Facebook, let's talk about Facebook. All right. For Facebook anyways, um, the Facebook pixel, you can paste the Facebook pixel right into the custom head HTML area. You'd want to do that on every single page. Okay. So thank you page, your lead magnet page, every other page on your website. Um, and the pixel is just a little script from Facebook that is going to allow you to track website visitors. And what it does, it allows you to build audiences. So now if you wanted to run Facebook ads, you could run ads to anybody who has visited your website, all right? Or you could ask Facebook to take that, that website traffic audience and create a lookalike audience. And so it's gonna create a set of people who match characteristics of your website traffic audience. And it's not gonna just create a set, that set is like, millions of people, you know, up to millions of people. So lots of power in using the Facebook pixel there. Um, moving on. All right. So getting people to the landing page, we'll talk about Facebook ads a, a little bit more here. Um, and like I said, we don't, get, we're not going to go into as much the Facebook ad side of things right now, or the nurturing leads who opt in. I do want to mention a couple things because I think they're important and they are an important part of the puzzle here. Um, but I want to do another live on Facebook ads in particular. Um, and uh, creating email sequences in particular, but just because of the scope of the content, I think it deserves, uh, its own live. So, um, I'll let you know when that will be, um, especially if you download, um, the show it article, or I mean, should the show it template, uh, then you'll be on the email list and I'll let you know, um, when that's happening. Anyways, getting people to the landing page. Um, one of the, one of the things that we see people do, uh, is they spend a lot of time on things like, blog content, they spend a lot of time on things like um, creating lead magnets, and then they share it once. You put all that work into it. Share it for as long as you consider it good quality content, all right? And so what that means is you want to share across your accounts. You, I wouldn't necessarily do it across every account uh, in one day, but even posting in different Facebook groups that are relevant, you know, so if you got show its permission, uh, for instance, posting something there and, um, you know, a couple of little hacks within that when people comment, right, it bumps it up in other people's feeds. Don't comment right away. What you, what we like to do is we wait to like to wait a little bit and then go back and like and comment pe on people's comments because then it bumps it back up again. All right, in an organic way instead of resharing it to a Facebook group over and over and over and over again. Um, cross promote with industry peers. Who who else do you work with that you can help out? You know, if you're a photographer, I bet there's a planner you can help out. If you're a planner, I bet there's a florist you can help out. So cross promote with industry pe peers. Um, and share across accounts. These are a lot of things that you probably already know, but I do think, see, but Lauren, uh, Lauren posting right now, I'm so bad at creating inc uh, incredible evergreen content and sharing it later. First of all, I think you create great content, so it's, you're not bad at that. Um, but yeah, a lot of us, just we just kind of forget or we just think, okay, well, people are going to kind of stumble upon this and they won't. So remember, you're not going to annoy people by sharing things over and over and over again. The reason being is because such a small people, such a small people, such a small number of people um, ever see posts from our social accounts, right? Such a, like just a fraction of the people who follow us. So it's okay to share things repeatedly. All right. So uh, lead magnets, we try to share at least, we try to share whatever our most up-to-date lead magnet is at least once a week somewhere. All right. Beyond that, though, of course, there are Facebook ads and Facebook ads, whole topic in and of itself. But a couple myths about Facebook ads. One, you don't have to spend a ton of money, especially if you're doing lead generation in a local area. You can create a, a Facebook ad, put five or ten dollars to it a day and um, and get pretty good results. All right. But but you know, even if you're not happy with like, maybe you're like, oh, well, I'm not getting in front of hundreds of people a day. Well, maybe not. Maybe you're not getting hundreds of emails a day, but you're getting in front of more people than you would if you were just to post it to Facebook or Instagram, right? So I'd very much encourage you to play around with that platform a little bit. And um, also understand that, you know, if, especially if you're selling a service that is thousands of dollars, all right? If you spent $300 and that's, that's how much it took you to book somebody who's spending thousands of dollars, is that worth it to you? 
Now, I don't have an answer because, because, you know, everybody has a different, you know, cost per result that they're trying to hit. But my guess is that if someone's booking a $3,500 um, wedding package, then, you know, spending $300 to get a result on Facebook ads probably, probably makes sense, right? So a few things to keep in mind with Facebook ads. One, um, if you're a service provider doing high-end stuff, I would uh, probably stick mostly with lead gen um, type ads um, and understand that like different types of lead gen is going to get different results. Um, and just because you're getting a lot of results with one type of lead generation activity doesn't mean that those are the best results you can get. So for example, you could give away engagement sessions, you know, or do an engagement session giveaway um, or something along those lines and probably get a ton of people to enter. All right. Because everybody wants free stuff. Whereas maybe something like, you know, the wedding venue idea doesn't get as many results. But what you might find is that the, the giveaway doesn't produce the, the same quality results as maybe the downloadable. Uh, and the reason being, again, because everybody wants free stuff. So those are all things that, those are all factors you want to weigh as you start running Facebook ads. Um, one thing that you want to do is uh, create a pixel. So if you haven't set up a business manager account in Facebook, you'll want to do that. And you just do that at business.facebook.com. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of that because there's a pretty nifty setup wizard that you can just walk through in, in order to get all of that set up and going. But that's probably what you want to do. And within there, you're going to get, um, Melissa, that's a good question. I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. Um, from there, you want to set up your pixel. And so what you'll do is there's a little hamburger menu. So you go to business.facebook.com, set up your business manager account, and then you'll go to the hamburger menu and go to event manager, events manager. And then you're going to uh, click create new data source, All right? Create new data source. Remember, there's going to be a replay of this. Um, and from there, you can create a new pixel. And then it's going to give you that little piece of code and you're going to go paste it where um, where I told you. Now, uh, Melissa had asked, uh, and James has already answered, it, what is a lead gen ad? Can you pick that as an option? You can pick that as an option. One of the things where we typically, I would say most of the, um, most of the lead ads we run, this is actually not true. We were setting up a different one this morning, but I would say a lot of them are custom conversion um, or conversion ads. So one of the options as you go set up your ad is to choose a conversion ad. All right, so you uh, select conversions, okay, and th and you would set up your ad uh, using that setup wizard. Now, what you'll need to do is you'll need to set up a custom conversion. All right, uh, web address to get the pixel thing. It's business.facebook.com. That's uh, I would recommend setting up a business manager manager account. So business.facebook.com, and it will just link to your personal account, which is already linked to some of your pages, and you can sort it out from there. Thank you, Adrian. Appreciate that. So setting up a, a custom conversion, um, this again, this sounds complicated, but bear with me here. Again, you can do this by going to your business manager account, business.facebook.com, going to the hamburger menu, selecting events manager, all right, and then creating a custom conversion. And what you're going to do is whatever your thank you page is, all right, you're going to add that URL here, all right? So your, whatever your URL equals, you're going to add that here. Okay. Now, whenever somebody lands on that thank you page, Facebook will know th that you have that you got the conversion you were looking for. That somebody went to your opt-in page, they downloaded your guide, and they landed on your thank you page, and so it indicates to Facebook that you got the conversion you were looking for. All right. Hopefully, you're still following me. I'm going to keep it pretty base level here. Um, no. Okay. So when you go to set up your Facebook ad, sorry, I have a couple slides out of order. When you go to set up your Facebook ad, um, you're going to be asked when you select a conversion ad to add a conversion event. And so whatever you named your custom conversion, so ours is named guide download lead. All right. Or one of them is you would select that as the conversion event. So, and, and that pretty much, I would say that gets you 75% of the way there when it comes to setting up your first Facebook ad. Um, you know, and this is going to take a little bit of testing, but I, I really do believe that, that, uh, that in Facebook, in getting results on Facebook, all right? Um, so it's definitely something worth uh, going through. Now, 
One of the reasons I like Facebook ads as well is it allows me to test audiences, headlines, and messaging. So within setting up a Facebook ad, I can test different combinations of audience, I'm sorry, different combinations of headlines and different uh, combinations of messaging. And so uh, troubleshooting a lead magnet that doesn't work. Let's say you're running a lead magnet and you feel like people aren't responding to it. Well, the first thing that we typically tell people to do if they're confident in the content that's in the lead magnet is to go change the headline, go change the title of the lead magnet. Because again, the part of it is maybe it's just not benefit oriented enough. All right. Maybe you're focusing more on the features and the benefits. So you just need to change up the headline. All right. And we've seen that make a difference right there. And Facebook is a great way to sort of test, uh, split test a lot of that. And so you can run. Um, so for instance, we have a brand, uh, brand questions download going right now. Maybe you've seen it, all right? Um, the way Facebook works now that you've signed on to this live, they'll probably serve it to you. Um, but y you can download questions from our brand questionnaire. On Facebook, on the ad side of things, we are running um, that ad. I might have just taken it out of a test, but um, we were running that ad with five different headlines, all right? As if the title was five different things. And what we're going to, and what we did was we just ch uh, chose the best performing ones and then use that, right? And that didn't require me to go back and have to make any changes to the download itself. So hopefully that makes sense. A little bit of a hack there um, to prevent you from having to do a ton of work figuring out why your lead magnet isn't um, maybe performing how you would like it to. Um, and I just went into that. So just to review here, um, create a value-filled lead magnet, build a high converting landing page, all right? Uh, and so again, we put together that free landing page. Um, Rebecca uh, asking what we are using for our landing pages and for your drip campaign. Is this done in show, uh, show It or are you using something like Flowdesk or something like it? Very good question. So for landing pages, this is done within our website platform. So we're actually giving away a Show It add-on template, which you can download. Uh, look for the link in the comments. Krista posted it somewhere. Maybe somebody else can post it too. Um, so the landing pages, I would always recommend you using your website platform um, for a bunch of different reasons. One, because you, you own that page, not you know your email platform, so it's not tied to, to your email platform. Um, in addition to that, typically, like you're going to be able to create a way more beautiful, functional landing page in Show It than you are in convert kit, let's say. Okay. So that's another reason why I'd use, um, show it as a uh, four year landing page. Um, for email, we use convert kit. It's in part because, um, we signed up for the year. So we are on a yearly plan and that renewed back in November. Um, but Flowdesk, uh, Krista played around with it and Krista really wants us to switch because as many people in this group have found out, it's just a beautiful, um, tool. So, uh, I, I would recommend either of those. I think both of them are uh, awesome products because it's easy enough for a beginner to get started, but advanced enough that you can pretty much do whatever you need to do using those two platforms. All right, so hopefully that answers your question. And then the key is getting uh, traffic to that landing page. Um, and the only thing that I really want to say about um, nurturing leads who opt in to your email list is not to be scared to send emails to nurture people. All right. When people are opt in, they're, they're raising their hand and saying, Hey, I want this content. And you're going to have, every time you send an email, you're going to have people unsubscribe. It's a, it's just a reality of having an email list. And that's actually a good thing. Every quarter we go and re, we remove, um, sometimes thousands of people who haven't opened an email in the last 90 days. So we do this every quarter. And the reason being is because we're paying per subscriber, right? We don't want to be paying for people who aren't even opening emails. And there's all sorts of reasons why people might not open an email too. Again, um, going back to some of the things we talked about earlier, not putting in the right email address, whatever it might be. But some of the email lists I'm on, I get uh, maybe an email a day from that business or that group. All right. Um, and, and it's because I'm interested in that stuff. And so I'm not, I'm not ever upset that they send a lot of emails. Um, I signed up for a reason. And when I'm, when I'm no longer interested in it anymore, I'll do what uh, we all have the option to do, which is unsubscribe from that email. So, don't be scared to send uh, 
emails to people who signed up. That's the reason you build an email list. There is, of course, um, a right way to do it and a wrong way. Uh, and, when, and I'm talking ethically here. Um, you always want to respect um, the people who sign up for your email list. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what I want to chat about um, today. Again, I want to do a couple more lives on some of these um, other topics that we started to dive into, but you know, just aren't able to devote uh, full attention to Facebook ads being one of them, and then um, email nurturing campaigns being another. So, if you're interested in something like that, um, let me know, uh, and we can uh, go ahead and set that up. Um, sometime soon. So if you have questions, I'd love to answer those. Uh, again, we have that free landing page template that you can easily add to your show at website uh, that's available for download. Um, we are doing a special 35% off of our sales or shop add-on pages. So again, these are add-on pages that can be added to existing show it websites. Um, those are going to be 35% off for the next couple of days. And then we have uh, all of our other templates are 20% off right now as well. So um, hopefully that's helpful if, uh, if you're looking for uh, something um, like that. Um, but at least, you know, uh, check out the free landing page template. Uh, Krista did a really nice job with that. Uh, and it hits all the different bullet points we covered uh, today. So if you have any other questions, um, Melissa's saying, I'm just getting up, set up with Flowdesk. Any resources about them you would recommend? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, Flowdesk is a great uh, is a great platform. I know they can you know they have a Zapier integration now, so you can do uh, a lot more with them. Um, are you asking for like pop up tools and things like that? I'm happy to chat about those sorts of things. Um, Steve, I cannot comment back in the window that I'm using right now, but after this, I'll comment the link. But if you look for Krista, uh, Krista's uh, Krista Jones, she has commented the link. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful. But again, I'll, I'll stick on for another uh, minute or two if anybody has any questions. Um, if you're just kind of wondering what we use uh, for a lot of our pop-ups and stuff like that, like I said, we use our um, website builder. Uh, we also use a, a tool called ConvertBox, um, which is kind of like an intelligent, um, which is sort of like an intelligent pop-up system. So if people meet certain criteria, uh, they might be served a pop-up on our website. Uh, we have an exit intent test going on our website. So if you go to our website and you go to leave, you hit the X tab, you'll see a pop-up uh, show up, um, stuff like that. Um, I know somebody else asked a question. Can you have more than one code in your custom HT, uh, custom head HTML box? You absolutely can. Um, I believe, I think Chris got into Google Tag Manager a little bit last week, uh, which is a way to organize kind of all of your tags so that they're not spread out. So then you're just pasting one code in that box. Um, but the short answer is yes, you can have more than one code in your custom head HTML box. Um, I was wondering if you could answer the question you asked when you were cut off. Can I offer or give away too much? You, I don't think you can. All right. And I, I really do believe that um, the people who see the best results are typically the people who give away some of their best content. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think it, theoretically it is possible, right? Um, you know, a great a great example, uh, I'm trying to learn a language, so I'm using Duolingo, right? So that's been my latest little hobby. Um, Duolingo has a pro plan, but uh, I'm not sure what the benefit of upgrading is. I think it's just you get rid of ads, but I'm okay with ads. So, I mean, like in that case, maybe, I guess. But the other thing about it, I just started with Duolingo. The other thing about it is that I might sign up for the pro plan um, if I continue with it just because I think it's awesome, you know, and I want to support companies that give away, you know, sweet content. All right. So that's uh, that's it. So uh, Melissa is asking a great question. All right. I'm still trying to understand the difference in content. What should be a blog post, IG post, what's in what's in your email and then what's on your website? That is a spectacular question. And the reason that's a spectacular, or that's a question that a lot of people have. Uh, the reason I love that question is because, um, y you know, it's, it, there's an easy answer. You can take a single piece of content and you can uh, create different versions of it for all of those things. So, for instance, blog, let's, let's take a blog post. You can take a blog post. So if anybody's on our email list, um, typically they'll get at least one um, 
typically they'll get at least one email from us a week. All right. Depending on what sequencing you're in, you might get more, but you typically get one email from us a week. Um, that email contains our latest podcast episode typically and our latest blog post. All right. So we release a podcast episode and a blog post every week. What you probably noticed is lately, whatever the blog post is about, that's also what the podcast episode is about. So basically we're, I'm writing the blog post, then I'm recording a podcast version of it. All right. Which is slightly different because it's conversational. Vanessa Kynes, who I think was on uh, this live earlier, she uh, comes on the podcast regularly and that, you know, so we, we build on that content in the podcast. So it's not exactly the same, but some people prefer the written blog post and some people prefer the, the podcast episode. Nobody has ever said to me, um, and if you feel this way, let me know, but I don't, I don't think it's the case. Nobody has said to me like, oh, I wish that the blog post and the podcast episode were different each week. You know, I, I just don't think because some people prefer one listening to one or the other, but then you can take that content and you can share about it on Instagram or take out a little piece of it and share it on Instagram. And then some of my best blog posts, because they were my best blog posts, because I knew that people were interested in those topics, we have spun out and made into lead magnets. So the blog post still exists, but we, you know, beefed up the content a little bit and we created a downloadable and it became a lead magnet. So um, we have a DIY website review downloadable. That was originally a blog post and it performed really well. And so we knew it was, it was a nice little test, right? Uh, we knew the blog post performed well. So we knew we had a good idea that the lead magnet would perform well. So I wouldn't overthink it. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully that answers your question. But um, if you follow along with us, you can see, you know, how we appropriate the same core piece of content for a bunch of different channels. All right, excuse me, sorry. Um, can we hire you to create ads and landing pages for us? You can, you can, Rebecca. Um, you can reach out for, for ads. You, Till.agency is the ads agency. Um, for landing pages, we also, uh, Till Agency is full service, so we also do landing pages. If it's more, if you want help with more website design stuff, then reaching out to us at davianchrista.com, though, is the way to go. Laura, what do you do with old lead magnets? Do you keep them up or bring them back after a while? Yeah, so we've refreshed lead magnets before. The branding questions one just got a little bit of a refresh. Some of it was, you know, sometimes it's just a superficial refresh. It's like refreshing the, the, the headline and some of the copy that goes with it. Um, but sometimes it's actually digging into the content itself and updating it. You know, some of our SEO oriented stuff over at Davian Krista, you have to keep it. You have to update it because um, every year some of that changes a little bit. Um, I think one of the mistakes that I see people make is they run a lead magnet for like a month and they're like, oh, like, and then they, they get rid of it altogether. And it's like, why? It's like, but yeah, I think typically like, because we see it every day for a month, we're like, oh, people are bored of this, but that's not the case. Like, um, lead magnets, I, I would keep them up as long as they're working. Uh, and if it's just not working because you're not sharing about it, that doesn't count. Right. So as long as you're sharing about it and it's working, keep, keep running it. Um, is this going to be uh, available to rewatch? It will be. I'll probably keep it up here in the uh, Facebook group for a while, um, at least while I make sure I can download the files. And then I think I'm sending the files over to um, Chris uh, at Show It, and he's going to put them somewhere. Uh, so, it, but it should be, point being, it should be available to rewatch. So, is Flowdesk just like ConvertKit then? Yes. Just like ConvertKit, yes, it's prettier, it's more visually oriented. So, they have a great uh, email builder. Um, ConvertKit, really was made for people to write plain text emails. Um, and there's a little bit of a debate whether, you know, like whether your emails uh, more likely to land in uh, spam or promotions mailbox, if it has more images in it versus whether it's plain text and this and that. So, um, at the end of the day, I think Flowdesk, uh, deliverability rates are great. And, you know, like I said, Krista loves what you can do with that platform. So I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year, um, we switch to that as soon as our ConvertKit subscription is up. But with that said, ConvertKit's a company that I've really liked for a long time. I think they do a lot of things really well. So, um, you know, worth probably checking out as well. Um, yes, Dolly, it will be, replay will be available. Should lead magnets have their own page on your website or as a pop-up? Um, either of those is fine. Um, there's advantages to both. Um, having them as their own page, like people don't accidentally select out of them. Um, pop-ups are blocked on some pop-ups are blocked on some browsers as well. So like your pop-up just maybe never would appear. Right. Um, so like, you know, funny, like we always refer, we have a live chat box on our website and sometimes people will complain like they can't find it. Well, it's because likely their browser is blocking it from appearing. 
Um, do you have one landing page, thank you page, and then base all of them off of that? Yeah, I mean, there's no reason, like that landing page that we're offering as a download, you know, you can take that exact template and you can reuse it for different stuff and you're just changing out the headline, you're just changing out the the text and all of that um, to make it specific to that landing page. Thank you pages, you can definitely reuse. So you could have multiple landing pages go to the same thank you page. That's certainly an easy way to do it. Um, we have a couple specific thank you pages for different landing pages just because we have different offers for each. So for instance, like for any of you who've downloaded this template, like you're going to see a specific offer, um, you know, that's different than some of the other landing or some of the other lead magnets we have um, because this is a show it specific um, webinar. All right. Uh, or training. So, um, you know, the, no right way to do it, but uh, definitely the easiest way to do it is probably just having a thank you page uh, and everybody goes there. Um, all right. So let me just make sure I answered all of the questions here. If you have a question, ask now. Oh, you haven't received the email yet. Oh, that could be embarrassing. Well, um, check your spam mailbox for sure. And if it's, if it is there, make sure you mark it not as spam. So your email service provider knows that we aren't spam. Um, it, sometimes it does take like five minutes. It should be pretty immediate though. Uh, I just need to double check on that. Um, and hopefully I didn't embarrassingly not turn on the automation, but as soon as I hit on, if I hadn't done that, it should go to you. So uh, I apologize for that. If other people are downloading and haven't gotten it, uh, let me know. Um, rookie mistake on my part, not, not your part. Does the landing page template you're giving away include a thank you page? It does not. The reason being is because on your thank you page, you can, like, it's going to be sp so specific to your offer. It's going to be, um, your thank you page will likely have a navigation and a footer. So when we were talking about it, we were like, what would, what would that even include? So what we would do is, um, copy what, what I'd, I'd recommend to do for your, your landing page. I mean, sorry, for your thank you page is duplicate whatever the simplest, um, page on your website is, and then create that into your thank you page and add the text there. And, you know, if you uh, opt into ours, you'll see our thank you page. So you can see some of the things that we do there. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Oh my gosh, this is just embarrassing now. Well, for me, not, not you all for me. So, uh, as soon as I get off here, <laughs> I'm going to go and look into why that is not working. All right. So Davey, get it together. Talking about landing pages, your landing page doesn't even work. I promise it's on the, it's on the email side. It's on the email side. Um, all right. Well, I think that's it as far as questions go. So I'm going to get off of here and go make sure I can fix my stuff up. Jeez, what a rookie. Um, and then hopefully you'll receive that uh, email shortly. If for whatever reason you do not, then send us an email, um, at support at davyandkrista.com and we'll see what's going on there. Um, maybe re-enter your email, make sure that it's uh, working. So Amanda got it. So it makes me think that it is working. Um, but again, if you don't get it, we want you to have it, of course. So uh, anyways, I'll go and troubleshoot that. Thank you all so much for your time. Um, really appreciate it. For any uh, additional questions, feel free to email us directly uh, at support at davianchrista.com. Um, we read it, every email that we get. Um, feel free to send us a DM on Instagram over at, at davianchrista as well. If you're interested in uh, Facebook ads and more of the advertising side of things, you can learn more about that over at till, T-I-L-L dot agency. Um, we're working on a new website, so new website coming soon over there. Um, and then you can also follow us on Instagram at till T-I-L-L dot agency as well. So hopefully that, um, hopefully we get to connect in the future. All right. See y'all.